All right, this is SSL Family Dad with Simple Suburban Living, and today I'm going to show you kind of an alternate way to clone tomato plants. Um, one of the things that I've kind of experimented a lot with over the last year out of the aquaponic system is different ways to clone um, the tomato plants. Last year, in fact, I cloned almost my entire garden um, tomato plants, probably like 15, uh, 15 tomato plants or so, maybe even more than that, um, all of clones out of the aquaponic system. And I'm going to try to do something like that similarly this year. Uh, and uh, I wanted to try to, a couple different ways to clone where I get a little better success rate. Um, I'm not using any root hormones or anything like that to get the clones started. I know that's a very you know, tried and true way to do that. Um, but I just wanted to try to do something a little bit different and try to, to do it without that. Um, so let's say you're in a situation where you don't have access to root hormones and other stuff. Um, so I want to learn ways to do it without uh, extra chemicals and uh, uh, things like that. So what I'm going to be trying today is using these uh, seasoning containers. This one's just like a lemon pepper container. These are plastic. Or you could probably use these smaller ones. Uh, I'm not using this size today. I'm going to use the bigger one, but uh, I'm sure you could get away with something, using something like this also. Um, I got this idea from a guy, a, a, another YouTube channel uh, called MHP Gardener, and I'll put a link in the description to that uh, video, or at least to his channel. Um, last year, I remember watching some videos where he did something similar. I don't remember what type of containers he used, but this is what I'm going to try. Uh, so I'll take you in close here and just kind of show you what I'm doing to get this set up. Okay, so the only things that we need to get this done are some type of a seasoning container, plastic of course because we're going to be cutting it, so glass one's not going to work in this case, some type of utility knife, and of course a pink hair tie. Now if you live in a house with uh, three daughters and a wife like I do, there is never a shortage of hair ties um, laying around my house. There are hair ties in every room and every corner of my house, but uh, if you don't have a hair tie, of course a uh, rubber band will work just fine as well. So something like that will, uh, will work for this, this uh, project. So all we're going to do is just take the cap off and I'm going to cut the top right off of this, um, this seasoning container. So just use your utility knife and cut that off in any way you want to. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is actually, well we can get this label off here, we don't need that. This ground cumin is what we use for our homemade taco seasoning, which the SSL family mom has been making for us. It's been very good. All right, that's good enough for now. So the next thing to do is pick a good spot, maybe right along the seam here, and I'm just going to cut this in half all the way down through the bottom. Looks like I need a sharper utility knife here. This way too. Okay, so basically what we've done here is just created a so this opens up. So you leave the back side intact. And then on the bottom side here, I'm just gonna notch notch these out. I'm gonna do this off camera because I have to hold it um, so I don't cut myself with a utility knife here. Okay, so I got the bottom of this uh, cut out here, so I basically just sliced down the side, through the bottom, and then I, I chopped out of the middle of the bottom here. Um, another way you could do this to make this look a little bit prettier, because you can see I kind of hacked this up with the utility knife, there's a real hard spot right in the middle of the bottom of these bottles. Um, and if you had a drill press, I don't have one, but uh, you could clamp this in a drill press and get a nice drilled smooth hole right in the bottom. Um, this is one I did earlier and it looks a little bit better, but still not perfect. Um, bottom line is either one of these will work. It doesn't really matter too much. Um, the stem of the tomato plant is gonna go right through the middle here. And uh, if you have a bigger stem, obviously you need a bigger hole, smaller stem, smaller hole. Um, but uh, either, either one of these will work. So I'll show you how we're getting these set up on the tomato plants to start the uh, clone process. Okay, so what I usually try to do is just select a branch. Um, you know, when I'm, do, when I'm working with the indoor aquaponic system, I, I try to select a branch that's right at the height of one of my supporting um, beams here. I've got these little little uh, sticks that come out and support the, the plants as they grow. Because the, we're going to add a lot of weight to the branch, and so you want to be able to support it some way. Now, if you're doing this in a greenhouse, you just want to string it up or something like that. 
Um, I've already taken my wonderful pink hair tie here and I've slipped it over the top of the branch all the way down to the base. And this is where I'm going to be putting our little cloning gadget. We're going to stick it right on the, the uh, first part of the, this uh, branch coming out. Um, I'm going to try not to interrupt these flowers because I'm hoping that they'll uh, fruit soon. So first thing you want to do is just slice off any branches that are going to be underneath our container here. So we don't want to have those. And you can do this to the top of the tomato plant or you can do it to a branch. Just it doesn't really matter. The nice thing about tomato plants and the reason that so many people clone them is because tomatoes are kind of uh, different than a lot of other varieties of vegetables in, in which they they're kind of a vine so they will actually grow roots from anywhere on the stem or branch um, all these little these little hairs sticking out here that can potentially become roots uh, all you have to do is just basically keep moist soil pinched around that branch or stem and for a you know long enough period of time and it'll start to, to sprout roots there so that's what we're doing here um, we're gonna get our little container We've got a couple more branches we'll pinch off here a little leaf here And then let's get our, okay, let me get my hand out of the way. So all we're doing here is just taking a container and I'm gonna fill it with dirt and keep that moist soil right around that branch. The reason this is a lot easier and, and works better than just stick, taking the branch, cutting it off and sticking it in, sticking in soil is because while it's still attached to the plant, it guarantees that branch is going to survive. It still has a source of water for that for that particular branch. So while it gets the roots established in the, in our little dirt cup here, um, we still have a good source of nutrients for the branch. So once I can see roots in there, or after a week or two, I'm just going to snip this branch right off at the base, and then I can take that and plant it in a bigger pot or move it out to our garden. And so that's what we're going to try here. So um, I'm just going to get this filled up with dirt and. Uh, water. I'm just using a mix of compost and worm castings for my soil. You can use any potting mix or whatever you want. Um, you want it to be a little bit more moisture retentive so that it will keep the moisture in there next to that uh, stem. Uh, and so that's the, the worm castings are, are really good that way. They, they hold a lot of moisture. So that's why I'm using uh, the mix I'm using here. But uh, So I'll get this filled up and show you what it looks like when we're done. It's nice and wet all along that stem there. Okay, and that's pretty much it. So um, the idea here obviously is uh, I would say probably in about two weeks we should have, we'll start to see some roots um, kind of up against the plastic here. And I'm obviously going to keep this wet every day. I'll get a little water in there. Um, it's very important to have this thing supported because it is, it is quite heavy now. And so hopefully the little support I have set up is going to hold it. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll bring you guys on, you know, maybe next week or the week after. I'll do an update here and, and just kind of show you what it looks like and how well it worked, if it worked at all. Um, I have never done this before to, with this particular method, so this might be a complete failure and it may fall off and um, not root. I don't really know. Um, this variety of tomato plant also seems to be a little bit harder to get to clone um, versus my beefsteak and cherry tomatoes that I did last year. So... Uh, this is a dwarf Roma tomato variety, and so it may just not, uh, not, not clone quite as well, but we'll see. So we'll keep you guys updated on that. I'll put a link at the end of this video, and that will be uh, have a link to the future video that I will do to uh, update you on the progress here. So, All right, so I'll be giving you guys an update in a week or two on the progress of the cloning operation here, the alternate cloning method, um, using these little spice containers. So hopefully this will work. Um, I'm hoping to get 100% clone rate out of uh, doing it this way. I know other people have had uh, success doing it this way. And so uh, we'll take you along here and see uh, how well it works for me. Um, but hopefully this will be a good way to get uh, you know, get a garden started in the, in the springtime uh, or throughout the, the season. You know, multiply your plants without planting your seeds and starting from seed. A lot of times seeds can take you know, a few days to a week, even two weeks to, to sprout sometimes. So 
you can cut that whole period out of the uh, process um, and get clones started. You've already got a plant that's you know a foot or two tall. Uh, you get you get a real big jump start real quickly. So um, I don't know if this works with other vegetable plant or other types of plants. Um, I've only tried it with tomatoes. So uh, you know if you guys have any comments or suggestions or other ways that you guys that you guys like to do cloning or what works for you, I'd really love to hear about that. So throw that down in the comments below. Please hit the thumbs up on the video if you appreciated it or found it informational at all or uh, entertaining at all. Uh, please hit that thumbs up. It makes a big difference for the videos. I always appreciate it. Um, please follow us on Facebook. Share your ideas. Share what you guys are up to. Uh, we put a lot of other information out, a lot of other things that we're doing on Facebook. Also our blog at simplesuburbanliving.com. Uh, we also have Instagram and Pinterest and there's another one that I'm forgetting. But uh, all the social media, I'll put all the links down, down in the description below. So check those out as well. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a good one.